Hello, welcome back everyone. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I can't see you. It's a bit of a silly thing to say. <laughs> I do have a bit of time on my hands this week, so I'm going to get fired straight back into our Lupo 18T track project and I'm going to be installing the Ignitron ECU. <laughs> But before we start, thanks very much every single one of you who's watched, liked and subscribed off the back of the last couple of videos where we uh, built the Forge motor in this garage and then we took it down to Andy's and installed it in Spencer's Mark IV Golf. We had uh, such a laugh doing that. Uh, so hopefully that came across uh, on the videos because <laughs> it, it was just like banter, banter, banter with a little bit of engine messing around as well. So yeah, thanks very much everyone who's done that. And wow, thanks very much everyone who's bought a t-shirt or a hoodie. I really do appreciate that. Um, I thought they were pretty cool, so it's nice to see that other people might too. And if you have bought it, please get in touch with us as soon as you get it. Send us a picture, I'll give you a shout out. I really do appreciate that. Uh, right, so that's enough of the thank yous. Uh, time to get on with installing the Ignatron. So if you don't know what Ignatron is, then it's this little puppy here. This is a complete standalone engine management system. It's designed specifically to be a replacement, a plug and play replacement for ME 7.5 ECU engine cores. Now, who was paying attention there? <laughs> specifically, the later 18Ts like this, uh, they came in Mark IV Golf, so and Cooper R's, S3s and Audi TT's, and they ran a wide band oxygen sensor Engine codes like AUM, AUQ, AMK, BAM. BAM. And they all run a Bosch ME 7.5 ECU. Now, it's a really capable and powerful ECU, but it's not really that configurable for the end user. Generally, uh, if you do have one, then you'll be taking it to a tuner, so the tuner can give you a tune. But let's face it, unless you're into a Bosch Mortronic graphs and picking out maps and scale factors and all that jazz, then uh, you know it's probably not going to be for you. I actually got in involved in it years ago. I downloaded the Neff Motor software. I uh, I was transferring files. I was correcting checksums, all the rest of it, and I just really wasn't that interested. The user interface on it is absolute garbage. So I just sacked the whole idea off and never really got involved with it right up until now. Now this is a really good option because it's got a fantastic user interface. The software is readily available. The development's ongoing. It's a nice bloke called. Balash, I think, from Hungary, and it's distributed by uh, Bill Brockbank uh, at Badger 5 in the UK. Bal and Bill, <laughs> the dream team. I've said it before, but Bill gives really good support on these, so if you're interested in this, I suggest you go and see him. There's also a good Ignitron page on Facebook where people are putting up their own uh, things, and Bill has even done how-to videos on YouTube, which are pretty good, which I'm basically going to be following. And so I did used to run the rod bender ECU on this car, the same one that Spencer's got in his Mark IV Golf now. And it's pretty wild in the boost stakes, so I used to control that with an Apexi AVCR and just limit the boost, and that made the car a lot more drivable. Probably the bulk of this work will actually be removing the Apexi out of the car, and, uh, and then I'll be able to fit the Ignatron. And because I try and do things properly, you'll probably find that uh, the wiring loom will be all wrapped up and all the rest of it i'll have to make good of it so that'll probably be the bulk of the work but uh yeah we'll get fired into it so cue the music let's go That's the ECU installed in the standard location. Then I've got the comms cable that goes down and then through into the bulkhead. We'll talk about that in a second. So I might as well mention at this point that one of the really, really good things about the Ignatron is that it allows you to ditch the airflow meter, you know, the things that are meant to be unreliable on the 18Ts. Uh, and then it allows you to map the car on speed density settings. So that's RPM versus the map sensor. So I don't have an airflow meter now. I've just got it on a joiner. The existing uh, map sensor that was in the pipework, I've just left that in for now. That will probably eventually be the port for my water meth injection. And my map sensor is now on the underside of this manifold, which I had welded on 
by Mick Boker at MB Motorsport in Jarrow. Um, I'm not too bad uh, stainless steel and steel on TIG, but uh, my aluminium's garbage, so <laughs> I'm not stupid enough to try that. I got Mick to uh, weld that boss on for us. So that's uh, the car, all set up, ready to go. <sighs> oh, hasn't it went cold lately? Not that Tom would believe us. Check this out, how cool is this? The Ignatron software itself to control and map and also display all the engine parameters. You can actually load onto a Windows 10 tablet like this and have it in the car. So this is an 8 inch Windows 10 tablet that's going to be permanently mounted in the car. Now it's it's a bit ghetto at the minute just on, you know, like Velcro and that. I'll, I'll sort that out, no doubt about that. But uh, I plan on having all of the gauges on here. So for example, this isn't set up yet, but you can have all of your engine gauges in the car and they can read live full-time data to you. It's absolutely brilliant, man. I'm not going to go into great depth in setting this up because if you look at Bill Brockbank's YouTube channel then you'll see he's got some guides already. He's doing a really good job of that so there's no point in me treading on that. There'll be links in this description uh, towards that and also the guides that you get with the Ignatron as well are an absolute piece of piss to be honest. They really are easy. So I'll just quickly get this set up and we'll bash on. So in the software there's a really good little base file wizard, you basically put your original engine code in which is specific to your wiring harness etc, uh, you, put, you answer all these questions uh, and change them for exactly what you've got, so for example map sensor located, mine's in the intake manifold now, I've got 550cc injectors and all the rest of it is specific to like for example I've got the 5 speed box, I've left the turbocharger control, uh, the vary valve time and all the rest of it, I've left all that turned off for now for when I just start doing the base mapping and I can turn them on in the future and all you got to do is just create a new sentence file boom and that's there it's all created for the AUM code so this uh, is ready for us to basically set up the throttle pedal now So now the throttle's set up, I just need to save that as a base map. Save as, yes, save that, done. And then I'll write that to the ECU. Right, sod it, let's start it. That's not in gear. Ready. It's alive! It's alive! It's a bit dramatic that, wasn't it? The car started anyway. So the car fired all right there, but um, the Lambda Center didn't look like it was reporting and that was one of the really important ones that I wanted to have a look at and I've just got into fault codes and I've got a code here for the heater element open circuit so I need to have a look at that because the last ECU wasn't reporting a problem with the Lambda Center so hopefully it's not I think I do have a spare though let's go and have a look Yeah, heater circuit's open on the uh, lambda sensor, so no wonder that wasn't reporting. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've got a spare one though, so bear with us, two ticks. Spare lambda sensor here, Aladdin's cave strikes again. Right, let's go and see if that code clears. Control unit, fault codes. So that's the full code cleared, and the only one I've got now is that the power supply voltage supply voltage is uh, low, and I'm expecting that because the battery sat there plugged in for the past few weeks. So I'm gonna have to charge that; it's no problem. But the engine starts; it's mint. Uh, it's a bit crazy how it's just failed like that uh, in, in in changing the ECUs over, but oh, it's just one of them things, isn't it? But how mint is that? Now I didn't know that I had a faulty heater circuit on my lambda sensor there, but. Uh, Quickly put a new one in and I've diagnosed that straight away. So the Ignatron is already helping us out. Absolutely brilliant. Now I need to fit the new Lambda sensor. Um, I need to get the tablet mounted properly and then we'll get the car out and we'll get it mapped. So uh, I'll keep you up to date with that. So hopefully if you're interested in that, then uh, you know, smash the like button, give us a subscribe. And if you're interested in the Ignatron and you know where to get it if you're in the UK, then you need to get in touch with Bill Brockbank at Badger 5. Tell him some crap YouTuber sent you. I'm sure he love the business. So thanks for watching, everyone. 
thumbs up, subscriptions, hit the bell notifications. It's all very much appreciated. The Lupo is now Ignitron powered. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one.